Okay, uh, we, we will continue our talk on the same topic derivatives stability criteria. This is the this is this is this is the uh, directional stability now. So again, uh, I'll just bring back my last class, uh, the last lecture, this slide. The reason I want to bring it back is to tell you uh, that uh, what we were talking, that whichever direction you give v and v dot. See, normally what happens if you give a velocity in direction one, then the y is going to be opposite direction. Give you a motion in v dash direction will be opposite direction. Therefore, number one is that both y v and y v dot are negative. See th this and this, both are negative. That we know. So why are you taking negative? Oh, okay. Why? Okay. Why? Okay. Now, now I understand your question. Why am I am taking negative? You see, if you give plus y, it gives no. Rather, I'll, I'll tell you this on the other side. Plus v gives minus y, minus v gives plus y. So, if you do a plot here v and y, the plot will look like this, like this. This slope dy by dv is always negative, minus by plus or plus by minus is always negative. Okay. That is why similarly dy by dv dot always negative. This is why it is always negative. Not only that, that we know it is always negative, it is also a large negative. Large negative. So, it is see I can say that y v, y v dot is large negative. In fact, this is of the order of mass because it is added, uh, you know, uh, this sway moment of energy. In fact, you see that equation is written m dash minus y v dot v dot. You see, you would have actually, you know, it is interesting because you would see in our, our other equation, it was mass plus added mass into acceleration. Okay, that was the equation. So this has become the added mass. Minus y v dot is added mass, not y v dot. See, y v dot is negative. So minus y v dot becomes the added mass. The ana analogically, if you compare with say heave and you know sway and all, see if you look at their equation of motion. Uh, if you actually look, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll just give more examples. See, we had got here m z dot dot equal to minus a z dot dot minus b z dot etc. This was my radiation force. So radiation force was minus minus a z dot was the radiation force. This was my my so-called z force. And when I brought it back this side, it become plus. Here, my z force is actually y v dot v dot. Okay. So, that A is minus y v dot. That is why when I bring it back this side, I end up getting a, this minus y v dot v dot v dot or same as say you can say A of you know v dot. So, the, the analogy is like this. You see that y v dot is minus or negative added mass in uh, that direction particular and added mass in sway and um, uh, heave are very large. So, this is a very large number, but it is negative number. Order the mass order of this mass. You see the theory is like this that if there is a shape here, the added mass is equal to almost you know like water of this, this circle and this if you take cylinder you know like it will be you can imagine that that, that, that volume is almost like a mass of the hull if you take a cylinder. So, it becomes it obviously it is not exactly mass maybe 0 0.9 time, 0 0.8 time uh, even 1.1. In a heave it can be actually twice the mass in this direction, but because the shape is not. You see again a deeper ship like a, uh, a frigate will have a much larger y v dot than a very shallow uh, river boat which is what shape. Yeah, exactly that is the depth is much more. Uh, so, you know it is going to push much more. So, we have got this y v y v dot. Now, let us see y r y r dot no or okay. let us now look at y r or uh, let me see uh, no. Uh, see we have got two uh, direction v, r, v and r and two values y and n. So, we have got y and v. So, we can do n and v now. Let us say n n v and n v dot. Let us let us do this one. Again we have to go through this equation.
but here we will just write this is my n plus n ok. Now you see I give a v again let me assume that I am giving a v any direction I can give on this it is easier to think that I am giving a v here negative v I am giving again I is going to give a pressures now you see you can here I, I, I we can make now this part this this part this stern part I can say will will we'll have something like y stern I can assume that this is something like y stern see all this added up together you can assume see when you when you add all the pressure on this face there will be some pressure and let me call that to be the, the net y force is y stem and this pressure is y stern. Now you see what is happening this n is going to be y stem into this distance say x stem minus because this is a plus 1 this is going to be giving a negative ok y stern into x stern this part is going to give me a moment on this side this part is going to give me a moment on this side they are opposing nature in fact if this was an exact cylinder then this and this would have just balanced and there will be zero value so you have got here stern and stem coming if the stem dominates then you have a plus number stern dominates you have got a minus number but it is basically first of all small so you what you are going to get here is that v here again in our case is negative v I have given ok. The negative v would give me a positive n provided the forward dominance. So, it is going to be something like this or it can be something like this depending on what dominance. Supposing my this dominance. So, my negative v would give me this more then this or negative. So, this will be my stern No, 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 I will just explain that here. So, then automatically this length will change. No, no, I will tell you see here what is happening here that see this here I am getting here n v v here they have given actually v uh, I have given a negative v remember ok. So, this I am going to get here n v into v uh, stem because this, this this gives me this way and this I am going to get here n v into v stern. Now, you see if this one is more than that then I have got net negative value ok and if this is more than that I have got a net positive value. So, so what is happening ultimately just think that supposing the stem dominates then I have got what a net positive value for a negative v. So, I have got a net positive value this n value net positive value for a negative v. So, the graph will or, or net negative value for a positive v. So, the graph will look points will look like that. On the other hand if my stern has dominated then I have got net value of this side which is negative. See, I would have got the entire thing turning on this side for a negative v. So, I would have got a negative v giving a net negative um, um, this thing that is I would have got this value which means positive is positive. So, I would have got this line. So, I would have got this line as a slope that means I would have got n v positive if my stern dominated and negative if bow dominates or stem ok this is what we are getting and both the cases the number is small because obviously there is a counterplay of stem and stern you see in, in case it is an exactly symmetric say cylinder you take midship this this basically is going to be 0. So, what is my doubt sir this uh, intersection of y axis y this line should be always should be always near the trend real ship. This line yes sir. this is through the center of gravity no. No sir what I am showing so this part is heavier aft part so the water acting this portion will be always stem will be little more than the stern. No, 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 no that is uh, no. X of the stem and x of the stern. Okay. So, the stem should be always shorter. No, no, the no, 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 that what you are saying is that, that, that no, that is not um, uh, always true. See, what you are saying that X this is always smaller than this. No, 
Okay, that's what you are saying. Maybe many for many shapes, but it is not always true because sometimes there is a rudder act plate that acts. Then you see this depends on the center of gravity. So mostly, if you take a shape, CG may be around midship, approximately midship. So the length part is same. So how do you say bigger? Because it is a frontal area. It is not the width of the hull. See, it is not the width of the hull. Um, okay, let me try to explain this. See, there is a shape here. It may be thinner than this thing, but it it is not this width that matters, it is this length, this part and this part matters, you see. Yeah, now if this is more or less similar, then you will have more or less same number because it is almost like a plate. See the fact that it is, uh, you know, it is bigger here and this becomes, uh, I mean, this thinner here does not really necessarily contribute. In fact, there is a con uh, interplay because what happened mostly you might have here a bulb, so it is goes up like that, but on the other hand you have a rudder here. So then how is the we can take that which will dominate this? No, you do not know. No, no, no. You, you are not. No, that is what I am, that is what I am saying. So, this can, okay, a good question. This case, therefore, you cannot tell. This is I can not ambiguity thing. It can be a, it will be a small number, either positive or negative, you cannot tell offhand. No. This is what you are de determined experimentally or as a characteristic. You see, if you could tell all of them, uh, then you could have told without any, any calculation that the ship is stable. So, regardless of what the ship, you can say conventional ship is stable. But that we cannot say that, you see. So there should be some ambiguity and this is one of this. No, you cannot tell like that. This is only to tell you uh, in a qualitative sense, just in a qualitative sense that this kind of term. But you cannot tell it is positive or negative unless you actually did a calculation for a given ship or uh, you did some experiment for a given ship. And many times what happened, you know, you can find out later on that everybody knows that you put a skeg here, that is you try to uh, increase the area in the stern in order to make the st uh, stern dominating as to make this NB positive. No, this all due to the area yeah, mo mostly, with, mo mostly with area, shape is there somewhat, but mostly with area. Yeah. So the length side is this length? You can say, yes, mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Okay, now we will go to, uh, uh, we, we, okay, now what did we, sorry, uh, uh, what did we get here is, uh, N V and Y V. Now let us see about N V dot and Y V dot. Actually, N V dot and Y V dot will have the same nature. No, no, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Here we have got N V. So um, I say that N V is positive if stand dominant, negative if bow dominant. Fine. N V dot is the same thing. Actually, N V dot we don't uh, discuss so much more because normally ha what happened? This part is an axial added mass acceleration. This becomes actually what is known as cross couple axial um, added mass. This is your uh, uh, N is your your sway added mass. In fact, this term becomes all uh, uh, people know that this is a very small number. So although it is, it can be positive or negative, but this becomes actually much smaller number as far as number is concerned. So, people can neglect that or normally it is neglected that, okay. This V dot part, the, the added mass part, this is equal to a cross coupled mom uh, added moment of inertia, uh, which means if I am accelerating the body in direction N or, or uh, in, in, you know, uh, let us say in uh, yawing it, what is my sway force? That normally is very small. So, we, this also can be positive or negative, but what I am trying to say is that in reality the added mass forces for this is reasonably small, so we normally neglect that. This is a cross couple term, bow and stern, you know, like going again positive, negative becomes very small. But on the other, if you do not want to take that, you can also take that to be a yes, either positive or negative depending on bow or stern dominating, but a small number. It turns out this is a smaller number than NV. NV dot is small, much smaller than NV usually for a ship. Now let us look at YR and YR dot. See, whenever I have, see I have got, I, I see Y and N and this is V, V dot, R, R dot. If you take this and this, this cross couple, this with this and this with this cross couple, this with this, this with this is, you see y with v, y with v dot, n r, n r dot is a diagonal, whereas y r, y r dot, n v, n v dot are all cross couple. So, the, we have seen that the first diagonal terms are all large negative, that is y v, y v dot. Now, we found out that 
n v and v dot at cross coupled terms can be positive or negative depending on Bose term commuting. Now, we will find y r y l or another cross coupled term. We will see that the same theory will actually apply because the cross coupled terms always means that there is a uh, you know like uh, interpolar positive negative. Now, here this, this is little more difficult to see. So, I, I see here what happened. You are now rotating it positive like that. That means what? If you rotate that basically you are giving a velocity here the velocity wise. See you are rotating positively here. Okay. This is positive r. This is right. So, you rotate that you are pushing it here. So, therefore, you are actually giving a velocity, the velocity goes like that. In other words, this is the kind of velocity you are giving. See, in other words, you are giving a velocity this side and therefore, there is a reaction force which obviously is going to be and here. Yeah, 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 that is okay this velocity will be increasing out line and therefore, there each point is increasing, but the force is this side and force is this side. Okay. So, there is a net force here this way again you can say y stun there is a net force here y stem. So, what is my y force total? The net force y see this is my positive side positive y positive y force is equal to y stun minus y stem. Once again therefore, I have given positive r remember therefore, what happened that you see once once more you can find out that uh, this is y no. So, let me see this y part y r hat. So, y r will be positive if stern is dominating. So, therefore, you see what is happening if you now this put a graph here, I have got y here, I have got r here. Remember my r is positive, for a positive r my y is going to be positive if this is positive. That means, if my star is dominating. So, I, I will get a, get a graph like that. That is y r is positive if star dominates. Okay. Exactly the same way it will be negative if stem dominates all right so what ha happens is that therefore that this this will be the case of stem dominating this is stern dominating and this is stem so again you find I, second thing is that it's a small number because there is my one one as other it, now this is therefore i again find out that this cross coupled term of y r is small number and of course, if you take y r dot, it will be exactly equally valid. In fact, y r dot and n v dot theoretically are actually almost same because this is actually the so called one can show from added mass theory that they will be actually same for a fluid uh, for a general body you know that uh, from the added mass theory and both are equally very small. So, added mass, but you can also say that if I accelerate it, the same thing will happen y, y stern, y stem, etcetera. But normally we do not talk of added mass part because it is known that y r is equal to n v dot, y r dot, n v dot equal to small number and it can be actually almost neglected. Whether you take positive or negative does not matter. It is this is also small, but this is much smaller than that and therefore, it does not it, it makes less difference and you will find out later on. Later on we will find out that this term is always combined in our equation of motion with another big term as a result it will really not make any difference. It, it, it is something like there is a large term minus y r dot. So, whether it is positive or negative this is going to still remain large lumber you know. See what happened is that if you have a term uh, uh, that we will show from the um, previous probably uh, uh, see not in our let me I just want to give an ex example. See, suppose we look at this sort of um, equation, you know. You see what I am trying to say is that y here I have got y r dash minus m dash. m dash is a large number, whereas y r dash is a small number, can be positive or negative, is a minus of say big number 
plus minus a small number is going to be minus of a large number. Therefore, it does not make any difference. You will see that y r dash and n v dot it, it, they are connected to a large number already. See this m dash x g dot. So, this is actually large number. So, this is a small number therefore, it does not matter. That is why we do not talk normally of n v dot this cross couple n v dot and y r dot because they are combining along with a mass term. See one thing we have to realize that the, the added mass terms always are added with the mass. So, mass plus added mass. So, if that added mass is very small number mass is always large number it does not matter with plus or minus that is why there is no discussion we, we do not normally discuss that. On the other hand y r and all is more uh, uh, becomes uh, no, not y r the, the other part becomes more important that is what it normally gets talked. Okay. So, th this we understand now let us go to the final part the final part is to find out n r and n r dot. Again, we are drawing that, and this we will find that is going to be. Now, here, according to our um, uh, previous diagram, I have given an R. So, if I have given an R here, this way, there is a net force Y stand, a net force Y stem for a positive. We have done that. No, we have, we have tilted that as I tilt it this way fluid is pushing this side and pushing this side. Let us in a moment what this gives this gives me a moment this part gives me a moment like this y star into a distance whatever distance x star I am calling. Okay. This gives me a distance what is this this is a positive end no, sorry negative end it gives a negative end. Okay. What does this gives? another negative n y stem into x stem. So, you see here interesting part is that both this, this part and that part gives me negative and added up. So, they that so I end up getting n to be y stem into x plus the other two. So, they get added together and in the opposite side. So, you end up getting therefore, for a given r a large n. So, n r is negative and large. Okay. N r is negative and large. Exactly the same way you can show that n r dot becomes also large negative n r dot actually this is equal to basically my uh, added minus of added moment of inertia in your just like added mass and this also becomes a large negative because added moment of inertia is always positive and in fact this is equal to i z almost moment of inertia added moment of inertia. See if you look at that 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 also is very interesting because what is happening as as it you are you are shifting this there is a water that is getting accelerated this water that is getting accelerated has the added uh, sectional added mass of almost the section of volume. So, that into distance square you add them all up you see that this sectional area into distance square if you add them up you end up getting a moment of inertia uh, which is almost same as the moment of inertia rigid body moment of inertia of the hull because hull also is like in a hull you take mass of the section into distance square here you take mass of that sectional areas water into distance square almost. So, you end up getting very large negative number. So, what we end up getting therefore, you see if I summarize it. So, we, we have got ultimately see y v y v dot is plus minus small Also, m dash is large, i dash is large because these are moment of inertia mass term. Okay. So, what we will now do is that we are going to put this back, we are of course probably not going to work it, but we will put it back and uh, in fact, we can work one term that uh, that will be interesting to work one term out uh, to see 
uh, how it works A, B, C to, uh, to say that wha what happens to this A, B and C. Uh, let me, uh, we have to look back at those, those slides. This is all a continuous thing you see. So, just one second, I will just try to that criteria part, yes. Now, you see we have this criteria B by A greater than 0, C by A greater than 0. I will act, what happened is that now we have understood this part. I, we will not go through the detail, it is not possible because it is large approximation, I mean you know we have to go through systematically. What we will do is that we will just take one term say A and I will tell you from those analysis whether A is positive or negative. Like that you have to we can do for B and then we can do see A we had earlier say A was given as I Z dash minus A naught dot dash into A M minus Y y v dot dash, it was like this minus y r dot dash minus m dash x g dash into n v dot dash minus m x g dash, something like that. Now, you see this is large, this is large negative. So, minus of large negative minus large, this full thing become large this is large, this is large negative, this is large. So, this thing is okay. this is small, this is also small or this may be small or large, but this is this x g dash actually you know is not very large close by. M dash is large, but x g dash is actually basically x g dash is your center of gravity which is normally midship. In fact, if you take it from midship uh, actually this will not this term will not be there. If you took the origin at midship this term will not be there. So, this is actually x g dash is a small number close by m x g dash is actually moment because of uh, the fact that origin is not coinciding. You remember one thing is that see that if I took an axis here then my stance time definition uh, differs and then I have got large x g dash. Normally, if I took the x g dash here, then see x g dash is such a point from where the stamens are almost same distance. Therefore, the origin that we take okay, from that x g dash is very small. Therefore, this can be small and in fact, I can neglect that if I took the origin at x g dash. In fact, sometimes people do that. I mean, if I took the origin at g, g is not too far. You see, g is not like 20 meter ahead of midship, maybe 2, 3 meter, 3 meter ahead of midship. Okay. That is also true. So, in regardless this becomes a small number and this also becomes a small number because it is n v dot. Does not matter even though it is little large or so, but this is small. See this is much large, this is much large, this will be much smaller as compared to this term. So, whatever happens to this and this term. M dash into x g dash, m dash is large but x g dash is very small. It can be 0 also. See, no, 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 no. See, this is large by this. See, let, let me put it this way. Let us not take the dash terms. Okay, let us take that suppose now term. Now, m is actually say mass 20,000 ton. This is 20,000 ton multiplied by 2 meter or so. Of course, it is non dimensional. So, there is a v term that L term comes in. In fact, if you take that, no, 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 this, the, the units are not taken. See, this dash, there is some kind of unit. There, there was a u here that we did not take. If you take it properly, this will be a small number. It is not, you see, this is 20,000 ton okay, uh, in, in, a, in a mass, but this has got because I have taken a dash, if you did not take a dash, there will be another term that will come in, so that the dimensional equivalence is there. Regardless of the fact that this remains a small number, okay. And if you take a non dimensional value, say this is a large, but it will be let us say 0 0.02, okay. This is supposed to be large because you are multiplying with half rho L cube. This is 0 0.02, but this is going to be 0 0.00 uh, because it is x g by L. You see 2 meter by 100 meter or 2 meter by 200 meter. So, it is 0 0.001 something like that. So, that this becomes much smaller. Regardless of that, unless it is of the order of 1, this will not cancel with that. See m dash and m dash x, see you compare this term, this and this, okay. these and these are same, but this is of course x g by L, which is of course much smaller than 1. Therefore, this term is much smaller than this term. 
relatively speaking, whichever way you look, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a non, uh, I am taking non-dimensional. In non-dimensional x t dash is x t by l. x t by l is always much lower than one. It cannot be actually one because it cannot be l. So therefore, this will be much lower than that. Similarly, here this will be so. So what happens is that when you when you compare this term, it is much lower than these terms. These terms are equivalent to twice of m dash. This is equal to twice of i dash because it is in a minus is equal to. So, this is almost like 4 times i dash m dash and this is actually m dash uh, m dash into another factor which is you know see the uh, rather first term is 4 times of i uh, da, uh, dash m dash. Next term is actually twice of m dash square into x g dash square, but this is very small. This is actually you see smaller than this because i dash is anyhow more than m dash. So, if you compare this with that, this is much smaller than this. Whichever way you learn, like see here I have got here i dash 4 times and m dash, here you have got 2 times m dash, m dash, x g dash, x g dash. So, one of them goes away. This is much smaller than this because you see i is mass into uh, uh, distance square. This is much smaller because of by l coming twice. So, you end up getting this to be much smaller than this, All no matter what shape you take. There is no question of ambiguity on this because x g cannot be you see x g cannot be more than length. No, has to okay. be In fact, x g has to, yeah. Yeah, it, it has to be decimal. Otherwise, the center of gravity is outside the shape. No, so. Okay. No, you cannot design it. You cannot. No, no, no. If you don't, no, no. If you don't have a dash, there's an additional term coming. That u term was coming here. You see, the, if you did not uh, that, uh, took a dash, there was a u term that will come. X g u and x g will again u will be some kind of value because you see all of them has a. If you don't take a dash, there the, the other term of velocity square etc. No, comes in. No, 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 no. Even otherwise, this is not a calculation right now. This is what we are trying to trying to um, guess from the looking at the equation. Should a be positive or negative? or should or it is possible for it to either be positive or negative. What you are trying to investigate the nature of it. See right now the analysis is all qualitative. See when you look at this also it is qualitative. We are only saying that if b by a is these two are greater than 0, then the motion will diminish at what rate we do not know, from which a magnitude we do not know because we do not know the constants there. We only know it is going to diminish that is all we know. And therefore, I am trying to find out here also that what must be the a, b, c. We know that we do not know how much it, this number is going to be, but all that we say is that we are sure no matter what ship you are designing, unless the ship is carrying mass outside it, okay, which is not possible, you are going to get a to be a large positive number. In fact, that is the concept of dimension Yes, you can say that. So, you are going to get a, a to be always a large positive number. Okay, that is what we are trying to say. So, A is going to be a large positive number and exactly same way I do not want to go through that because B is much more uh, complicated because much more terms, but you can find out that B also becomes for a ship always more than 0. Okay. So, again this is for I will say usual shifts, but you know, if you want to make them negative, you have to be really unusual, not just unusual, okay, which probably you cannot do it. So, now you look back that this is always positive uh, and this is always positive. So, what my criteria boils down to? Obviously, if this is positive, this positive means this is satisfied. This is always positive means it boils down for a shift that C must be positive. So, my criteria for a usual shape, uh, shape reduces to the fact that she, C must be positive ultimately. Okay, this is what we are trying to, uh, I was trying to uh, sort of uh, look uh, eventually. You see this, uh, this part of her. Okay. So, Okay. 
Now, what is C? We will just write down. Therefore, we can actually uh, make that uh, much simpler. See, C is positive. Now, C is equal to, no, I, I am not right, I mean, I did not do that, but if you uh, wrote it down, C would be equal to NR dash YV dash minus NV dash YR dash minus M dash. This must be equal to 0. This is what the criteria becomes. Or that that is equivalent to saying, n r dash by y r dash minus m dash must be more than n v dash by y v dash. This is the criteria for a shape to be stable. Therefore, you see now this, this makes sense because you see this num if you look at that n r dash and y r dash minus m dash n r dash of course is large uh, number of one direction, but because of this m dash here you do not know this. Okay? Now, now, you see this can be this is some number, but it can be remember there is a sign convention. Let us say this is always positive, but remember that this can be positive or negative because this n v dot and y v dot. This is uh, no sorry, sorry. This is actually large number y, y v dash always negative, but this can be positive or negative. So, basically this criteria comes down to because I, I am sure about this sign, I am sure about this number, I am not sure about this, I am not sure about this. And it, in fact, it turns out that the criteria reduces to this part. And you may say why y r dash becomes equal to m dash. That is because you know in y r dash is a y force for r dash, okay. And although the stem stand dominating, it turns out that it is it is it can be it is a small number. But it, see moment and mass. If you see small moment is equal to a mass because whenever you take a moment, it is mass into a distance. Some kind of distance is involved there. So this is actually small all right, but small compared to the corresponding moment of inertia term. So, here this becomes somewhat like it could be like this. In fact, the, if you numerically calculate these dash terms, uh, what happens is the non-dimensionalization of this and these are different. They here I think n r da, da, dash we had uh, half row L 5 probably uh, or, or L 4 this has got L cube. So, there is an L factor there that is why this comes like this. Anyhow, the point remains that the criteria reduces to this. Okay? So, this is the criteria of hydrodynamic dimensions. This is my so called criteria for controls fixed okay. Obviously, now the question comes for a shape. Therefore, if you want, if you are designing a shape, you will need to estimate this number. That is the first thing. But one thing that I want to say also, and we will be just discussing that in a minute, is that see, uh, the many there are many shapes which do not necessarily have straight line stability. Okay, it is not a mandatory requirement for a shape because. Uh, you can always make it stable with the rudder. Now, I will actually talk about the rudder part and try to say uh, that uh, you know how this rudder part um, comes in picture. So, you can always make a ship stable by application of rudder that means by applying a control surface force. All right. This was a control fixed force. Now, obviously, the this must be more than this. Nobody says how much more. It turns out that if this is too much more than that, it will be very stable. So, that which means that you will have, have to produce much larger force to turn it. On the other hand, it is less than that, of course, it will be continuously trying to turn and you have to continuously apply rudder. So, the difference between the two actually tells me the extent of stability or instability. If this is less than that and is very much less, then you know that for a wide range, it becomes unstable, etcetera. So, what I mean that although this criteria we find out, Again, there are we will discuss this later on. There are number of definitive maneuvers from which you can tell the extent of straight line instability, the extent of that. Let us look at one small thing here about this uh, equation of motion uh, when I am adding rudder. Let me go back to this equation of motion part. This was control fixed, okay. What happens when you add rudder? And wh what is meant by control derivatives? That is what another thing I want to I have to discuss that. We have to go back to the first. Like uh, notes where we have this 
I, I am going to write down this. No rudder, or rudder is actually frozen fixed. What we have got is rudder actually frozen fixed. We have got something like this equation, no? M minus four. Okay. I am just going to write down this equation again. You see, so far what we discussed is what is called controls fixed motion. Means I have no rudder, or rudder is there. I have frozen it. I am not operating the rudder at all. Okay. Now, all that, that I am trying to say is that if the ship is slightly di disturbed and then the disturbance removed, will it maintain a straight line or it is going to keep on oscillating? Obviously, you would like to make the correct the course of the rudder. Okay. Now, if supposing the ship has an inherent uh, you know like uh, tendency to keep, keep deviating, then you have to continuously keep on ap applying the rudder, correct the course. So, your rudder force, the requirement and force autopilot becomes much, much larger, you have to continuously do. It is something like you are trying to drive a scooter which is very unstable, you know, or, or a cycle as you, can, you have seen, you, you, can, you can still drive a, a, a so bad, pulls. yeah, but you have to give the other force, so you know, so exactly, uh, that is right. In car also it happens sometimes, there is a pull, so you have to always keep the steering, but you know, it is like same thing, if I have a car and I leave my steering, say my car, it should try to go on a straight line. Some car at least steering will keep on uh, this thing. So, in that case also you can drive, it is just that you have to keep on applying and your steering you have to probably go to the mechanics faster. Okay. <laughs> so, similar thing here. On the other hand, remember that if a car is very stable, okay, then you have to put like a truck much larger force to turn it. Okay, you need power steering, full power steering. So, something like that. So, this is what we talked, but what I mean is that now let us look back at this equation of motion. Uh, again, I will write and I will see that what happens if you add rudder. Okay. See, we had this equation of motion, uh, maybe I should write this this way minus y v dash, v dash plus This was 0 and I have got this. All this, you know, this sometimes gets confusing. No, no, actually uh, I, even I make mistakes uh, in writing, many a times there can be typographical mistakes of writing, but that is not very important, you know, because you see uh, I always say it this way, in reality when you sit down and do, you will have all the time, you will not have just uh, reproduce from quickly like an examination or a short time. So, you, if you think logically, suppose I made a mistake, you then uh, think that it must be dimensionally same, etcetera, then you can easily work back that, oh, this should have been dot, not dodged by that. That is a trivial thing. So, I had this thing to be 0 okay, initially. What, what I am trying to say now here is that see that you see, uh, you, now when you have a rudder, okay, now the, now the, this part maybe I should just little bit see from that little bit. Now, rudder working. So, we have got a ship here and there is a rudder here. Okay. This rudder has been turned like that for example. So, this is my say V, this is my X, etcetera, etcetera. This is my uh, maybe the V vector, etcetera. Now, when you turn the rudder here, delta R rudder angle. Okay. When you turn this side rudder, what happens? What will happen is that see, here you are going to get a rudder force, some kind of y rudder. Okay. Now, this force will typically depend on the angle delta r, more the delta r, more the rudder force, something like that. So, you can write this to be as d y by d rudder angle into rudder angle or you can write as y delta r into delta r. You see, 
again you can you can you can say the rudder force okay is equal to the rate of change of rudder force with respect to rudder angle into rudder angle in other words dy by d delta r basically tells me what is my rudder force per unit delta you see in other words you are measuring y versus delta r obviously this will for some time it will be straight line it might go further off but for some time it will be a linear straight line you know any control surface propeller whatever the, forget that part the question is that you are going to get a rudder force here the rudder force will be equal to or you can write them as y delta r as in, into delta r slope of the rudder and and it is also of course going to give you a moment this moment is of course going to be if the rudder force action is here and the point is here is going to be actually x g you know whatever that say x r you can say into y uh, rudder. Okay, this is going to be my n rudder. If once more I can write n rudder to be as d n by d r into r in other words n rudder d n by d n rudder by d delta r into delta r. I mean, I, I, let me go to the next page and try to do that. In a, what I mean is that y rudder can be written as y delta r into delta r, n rudder you can always write like that because you see after all what is y delta r? This is nothing but y delta r. d y rudder by d rudder angle. Similarly, n delta r d n by d actually I need not write partial. This is just by definition just like earlier what did I do earlier you see think of it in earlier cases whenever there is a y force arising for v I said it is d y by d v because v is causing y. So, I want to know power unit v how much y here delta r is causing y. So, I want to know what is causing this because if I know this term then I know tomorrow if the rudder is at 5 degree so much force 10 degree so much force 8.9 degree so much force etcetera etcetera. Okay. So, I have got this extra force coming why I am mentioning that is because now you see if you go back to that I am going to have this extra force coming here y delta r delta r and of course, I will have to have this dashes here because this are non dimensional I am not proving showing that, but because everything is non dimensionalized again this also become non dimensionalized delta r actually is already non dimensionalized we need not actually do this delta r because it is an angle having you no know, if you use radial this becomes n r dot delta r. Okay. So, you end up getting this the, the equation of motion with rudder working will have this because there is an extra force coming here just like here minus y v there will be a you know minus y del del which you can bring on that side. So, you end up getting a force like that. Okay. All right. See, uh, the, what I want to say here is that this part, this and this, these are called control or rudder derivative. Just like my other parts were called hull derivatives, this is known as control or rudder derivatives, or you can say control surface derivative. Actually, I can call these two as In fact, for submarine and all we have got large number of control surface derivative. Now, I will uh, very quickly try to summarize this because we have got not much time. See now think of a ship which is making a steady turn, a turning with a rudder action. When it is turning steadily, you see when it is turning steadily I do not have any V dot because there is no acceleration. Okay. I do not have any R dot okay, because there is no uh, uh, your uh, uh, acceleration. I have only v. I have only this. I have only this, and I have got only this. I have only this. I have only this, and I have only this. What I mean is that when the ship is making a steady turn, I can easily find out an equation of motion during the steady turn when it is making a turn because it is just a steady state. It is not accelerating any more under rudder action. Then this equation, this will go to zero. 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 And I have something v, something r equal to something, something v, something r equal to something. No divide. It is much simple algebraic equation, and I can very easily find out what is my v and r, and from there what is my r and delta. I, we will do this afterwards uh, because we, uh, we do not have 
uh, sort of uh, like time for today's lecture because we will we will discuss this when we discuss about the turning circle manifold but what i want to say is that that this is a concept where we are trying to put uh, by showing that if the rudder is working equation motion is modified because you have got now extra forces coming and these extra forces are actually such devised such that we will find out later on that this will cause if I give a y r uh, you know if I give a delta r to be negative the ship is going to turn on the other side. It is actually devised such a way that uh, you know if you turn it this side the ship on turns, turns on the other side. So, that analysis we will do afterwards for a steady turn. If you want to actually show the transient you have to solve this full equation which cannot be solved so easily. Okay you can solve in a time domain in like step by step simulate like you know give a force see how the trajectory is. So, this is about the rudder part and in uh, the I wanted to say, say that actually if, if here you will find out an interesting part that the what remains here this part this part and this term this term you will find out that actually this two and this two have a relation with respect to my, my stability criteria. Um, the stability criteria if you look back uh, I, I just show you a little bit it contains of n r y v n v y n minus n that is uh, that is uh, where it is uh, uh, n r y wait now y v here oh this uh, v dot n r yeah uh, what I mean is that th th we can actually show that there, there will be a there will be a this r dash e, the n r and y v this multiplication and this will come. Uh, one can show that basically this criteria uh, have a relation with this rudder angle. In other words only for a stable ship I will do that afterwards only for a stable ship you will find out that if you give a rudder this side the ship turns that side. In other words you are actually assuming there is a stability involved somewhere. Anyhow that we will discuss. In, uh, in the subsequent class with respect to uh, our um, uh, you know definitive manifolds. But this is where I will stop here. So, what I want to sum up here therefore, is that we should understand that there is something called stability criteria which is an intrinsic property of the hull. These are intrinsic property of the hull. So, therefore, if you have a bad hull design which has an intrinsically unstable uh, hull, then obviously, you will need much more rudder control to make it stable. So, it is good to have a design from the beginning where this is just for met and with a small positive. This is just little more than this. Thank you. Earlier we have talked about this fact that if there is a ship here you have fixed the control, you we have studied the mass behind various forces that, that act on it and try to find out uh, or try to describe uh, the properties or characteristic necessary for the ship to maintain a straight line. In other words we had <coughs> tried to find out what must be the hull characteristic, hull's hydrodynamic characteristic that would ensure the vessel has some kind of directional stability property. But in reality what happens that what you want is with the control surface that is a rudder, we can call this is to be the control surface. With this working you want to find out how the ship handles. Now, there are two things of this handling. One thing is that if you want to change the direction if you want to go in a zigzag manner or whatever, you want to turn, you want to so called manifold, you want to find out how effective the rudder is. See moment you give the rudder after how long it turns, what is the radius it takes to turn, if I want to change course how fast it can change, all these characteristic will be so called handling characteristic with the rudder working. <coughs> Similarly, you see you also want to uh, see that even with the rudder the ship must have more or less directional stability it should try to follow a fixed path if you do not want it to deviate. Okay. So, this things that is its ability to maintain directional uh, stability and ability to actually turn fast these are all what you can say broadly the handling characteristics and how to check them typically what happened when the ship is almost ready or you know fully ready uh, before delivery it goes on so called trials. 
everybody knows that where you have many tests including a number of maneuvering tests or number of maneuvers. Those maneuvers are what are known as definitive maneuvers means the, uh, trying to take the ship in a certain course. This is very common in any vehicle, even car. You will see that in a car they put some thumbs and you, you have to take the car like that. You have to see how fast it can turn, all this stuff. Ship also same thing happens there. Just do the opposite, just reverse it again back to plus 20 and hold it fixed. This is going to go up again, down again eventually and begin to turn again on this side. This is going to be like this. Again at this point you turn it back. We do not have time for this now but and then this also you are measuring this path width. This will also actually it may go like something like that you know something like this is my say y0 or, or path width I can I will tell you. This is my black is rudder angle. This is my heading angle. I will uh, uh, very f uh, soon stop and pick up from that. We unfortunately did not have time. See, therefore, it is like a zigzag. You actually like steer on one side. As it goes to that much heading, you turn it back, swing it back. As it goes back to that heading, you swing back again. So, you keep on turning like that. You can do for a long time, but normally two or three swing is good enough because eventually it is supposed to reach a steady state. Okay. And you keep measuring the rudder angle of course you are giving and the heading angle and of course the path angle because what happened the ship is going and if you see in a canal the ship was going this side then it will come to this side then it come back again it will come back it will keep on going like that the, the, the ship would. I will discuss that. This is the zigzag maneuver we will stop here um, soon. I will in the next lecture I will pick up from this diagram because uh, the time is up for this one and see what we measure and these measurements means what. Okay. Uh, so, I will stop uh, this part of the lecture, but we will pick up from this diagram in the next uh, hour.